Denon is celebrating its 110th birthday. So first of all, congratulations with this milestone in your history. When it was launched in 1910, imagine that, 1910, it launched its first gramophone player. Later on, it took its first steps in the pro audio. In 1945, it recorded the first speech from the emperor ending at the ending of World War II. And now in 2020, there is the 110th anniversary edition. Check it out. When Denon was celebrating its 100th birthday, it launched an anniversary edition as well, of course. Uh, but back then it was black and silver, I think. And uh, apart from the completely different layout of these products, the color is also very different. This is like a very chic gunmetal gray. And we, we like it a lot. It looks very well finished. And it's different than all the other Denon products, like the champagne and black. So this is, apart from the inside, it also looks a little bit different. And we think that's a very wise choice because you don't buy a 110th edition if you're not into something special. So what's the big difference between the A110 series and the 2500 series? Well, it's a question we get a lot from our readers and viewers. And honestly, it's a very good question because at first look, it's only a different color. I mean, it. This one is gunmetal gray or whatever they call it. And uh, I think they stole it a little bit from Classé, if I have to be honest, it's quite similar. And Classé is also part of the Sound United group. So maybe they took a look at the neighbors and they thought, wow, that's really nice. We're gonna use this for our anniversary series. Well, yeah, whatever, it looks great. Uh, but of course, on the inside, there are also a lot of differences. And let's first check out the deck board. Well, if we take a look at the deck board, we see four PCM 1995 uh, chips, deck chips from Burr Brown, well, Texas Instruments now. And the reason they use four is, well, if you stack deck chips, you can lower the noise floor. And uh, it, a lot of producers do it. Uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, um, esoteric, yeah. I think Esoteric does it, and uh, they use eight deck chips sometimes in their ultra high-end models. And if you go like to eight or 16 chips, it can get cl clinical, but uh, it's how you do it, of course. It's but before you go into those deck chips, you have to use the AL32 processing in case of Denon. And they use their processing uh, uh, to up the sampling rate. Uh, Marantz does it with MMM, Marantz, musical mastering and then use AL32 and it's in in, in basics it's, it's an FPGA chip that upsamples everything in this case to 1.4 or 1.5 megahertz depending on the native sampling rate well that's also different because the previous generation like the 2500 series only did it to 768 maximum so it's twice as fast and it's not twice as good because because of that but it's still a little bit better because the higher you go and the better you process it be before it goes into the deck chip the less the deck chip has to convert and the less mistakes it can make so in theory it should be better um, one thing to consider is that this dcd 810 a 110 i'm sorry doesn't have any deck inputs the Marantz does, the, model, the SACD30N uh, does have DAC inputs and you can use the MMM DAC, uh, the Marantz Musical Mastering DAC, uh, but this Denon doesn't have any inputs, it doesn't have a streamer, it doesn't have anything and it's still 3000 euros, so it's the same price as the Marantz. Is this a better optical player? I think it is. Uh, it's a little bit more punchy and it's a little bit more fun and it's a little bit more energetic, but that's also the sound of Denon, so it's tuned differently. It's the same CD transport, uh, 
but like I said before, the deck board is completely different from the Marantz. The Marantz uses its DSD uh, conversion and this one just does an insane amount of upsampling before it goes into the deck chips. Well, that's the whole digital part that's different from the 2500NE and from the Marantz models. And now let's go to the PMA uh, A110. The PMA A110 does have the same deck board as the DCD. I think it's the same because the specifications are exactly the same as the DCD player. But the PMA A110 does have digital inputs. So you can use uh, coaxial, you can use optical, you can use USB. So uh, you, can you can utilize the AC AL, AL, AL32 processing just like the Denon uh, DCD does with playing CDs and well the DVD ROMs and stuff like that. Um, it has the same upsampling but it can go further because USB can go up to 384 kilohertz. So this one does accept uh, all the high sampling rates you can uh, throw at it. The optical player only can go to 192 because there is no optical medium that has any higher sampling rates than that, and USB does. So in this case, if you look at the specifications, you, you can see why does this go to 192 and why does the PMA go up higher? That, well, that's purely because of the USB input it has. So it does, have op it does have digital inputs and it has analog inputs, including phono. Well, just like with the Marantz Model 30, the whole phono stage has been revamped and it, it, well, according to the sheets we have, it's amazing, but we didn't test the phono yet during our sampling video. But we did use the CD, uh, the analog input, we did try the USB uh, DAC and we did use the optical player to show you how it reacts to speakers. Because of course the, the main thing this, uh, this amp has to do is power speakers. And it, it, it has a completely different signature than the Marantz Model 30. Where the Marantz Model 30 is tuned like a Marantz product, so it's a little bit laid back, uh, it does have more punch than the previous series, uh, but it's still a very laid back signature. And this Denon has a lot of power and energy and punch, and it has more fun factor than the Marantz, we think. It's still a matter of taste, of course, because you have to like this energetic presentation. But if you look at the specifications and you see 80 watts in 8 ohm and 160 watts in 4 ohms, you can think, eh, that's not a lot, but it's enough. We used the Bowers & Wilkins 805 D3, and we used the Dali Rubicon 6, and we used the Focal Sopra 1 speakers, and it powered them all without any issues, uh, even the 805 D3, which is not an easy speaker to drive, had a lot of oomph in, in the bass and it had enough staging and it, it was just good. It, it, it is a good amp. What's the difference between the 2500NE and this A110? Uh, well, it's, it's quite obvious to us because we used the, the PMA 2500NE in our multi-test uh, and it has the same fun factor, it has the same punch and the same energy, but this one just has more refinement. Uh, it's, it's more smooth than the 2500NE. And that's purely because of the used components. Uh, they used better components for the power supply, they used better capacitors for uh, the power supply, they used a better deck board. Uh, so overall, they used some higher quality uh, components. So it's not only optical, if you look on the inside, they used some different components to make the whole overall sound just a little bit better. And I think it's pretty obvious when you connect it to a transparent speaker system. Well, price-wise, at least in the Netherlands, in Europe, it's 3000 uh, euro each. And they launched some other products like an AV receiver that's 5500 uh, euros and they used uh, they, they launched a phono cartridge which is 600 euros at least in the Netherlands. Um, 
we're not really into uh, AV and uh, I'm not really into vinyl. That's another colleague of mine that does all the vinyl stuff. Um, but the AVC A110 is supposed to be a really good multi-channel amp. So if you're into Denon and if you're into home cinemas, you could check it out. It's 5,500 euros, so it's not cheap, but it's supposed to be a really nice product and it supports 8K, 8K and all the codecs you need. Um, this is the end of this video. We hope you liked it. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe to our ch uh, channel so you can follow all these sampling videos we put online. And uh, recently we launched a uh, lossless sample database so you can check that out and download all the WAV files you like. Um, well, thanks for watching and see you next time.